With action and suspense out of the Old West comes the most famous hero of them all, Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd. The Ring of the Silver Spurs heralds the most amazing man ever to ride the prairies of the early West, Hopalong Cassidy, the same Hoppy you cheer in motion pictures, and the same California you've laughed at a million times. Raw courage and quick shooting have built a legend around this famous hero. Hopalong is a name to be feared, respected, and admired. For this great cowboy rides the trails of adventure and excitement. William Boyd as Hopalong Cassidy and Andy Clyde as California. Well, Hoppy, what about our story? This one we call The Lawyer of Laredo. It started in the barren country that borders the Rio Grande as California and I were moving over one of the biggest cattle spreads in the world the Broken M Ranch. It belonged to the Mayos, a family full of pride and arrogance. We kept running into their hands from time to time, and on the second day of crossing through, one of them rode up to tell us Jesse Mayo wanted to see us. Jesse was boss of the Broken M, so we headed for the big hacienda. With Jesse was his cousin Garth, foreman of the outfit. Been a few years since I've seen you, Cassidy. What kept you away? You might ask your cousin Garth about that. Garth, what's he got to do with it? Cassidy figures himself a sort of eagle, Jesse. Don't like to be told what to do. I ordered him out of Nugget City a while back, and he got a little sensitive about it. As I remembered, Garth, I told you to go howl at the moon, and you swore I'd be shot if I ever set foot on Mayo Holding. That's right, I did say that, and what I say, I mean, so... Put your gun back, Garth. I've got other things to talk about. Cassidy... Maybe you remember my daughter, Joan. I certainly do. One of the prettiest girls I ever saw. Must be about 18 now. She's 19. And she's one of the stubbornest girls you ever saw. Come over here to this window. Look down there in that stockade. Recognize the fellow tied to the post? Hmm. Hmm. Looks like young Duke Faber. It is young Duke Faber. Well, I knew you hated Charlie Faber, Jesse. But I never figured you'd carry it on the feud with his son. Not with Charlie dead and buried. Never mind the moralizing. Just listen to me. Duke Faber's down there because of my daughter. Right now, Joan is in Laredo. Ran away from me. Because I wouldn't let her marry Duke Faber. She's waiting for Faber to show up in Laredo so they can get married anyway. As far as she's concerned, I can go to blazes. I'm sorry to hear that, Jesse. Joan's a fine girl. I always liked her. And she likes you. She'd probably listen to you. That's why I'd like you to go to Loretta and talk to her. And what would I say? Yeah, how much I control things in this country around here. Yeah. Part of my holdings are in the United States and part in Mexico. Which gives me a lot of power. You might even say it gives me the power of life and death. Mm-hmm. What would I say to the girl, Jesse? Tell her I've got favor here. Tell her she has to agree to give him up and come home. Tell her if I don't see her here in five days, agree under those conditions, Duke Faber is going to die. Now back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Lawyer of Laredo. The Mayos and the Fabers. It had been one of the bitterest feuds in the history of the cattle country. But now romance has sparked between young Duke Faber and pretty Joan Mayo, and they want to get married. But Jesse, Joan's father and head of the Mayo clan, has laid down his ultimatum. Either the girl agrees to forget the boy, or the boy dies. Well, Cassidy, what's your answer? Will you carry that message to my daughter? I don't know, Jesse. Seems to me you and young Duke's father used to be pretty good friends, Cassidy. That's right, Garth. Charlie Faber once saved my life. Yeah, I remember that, too. Ain't liable to give you ideas, is it? What are you talking about, Garth? Well, Cassidy might figure he could help the kid get away from here. Ah, forget it. Nobody could get that kid out of here. Made up your mind yet, Cassidy? Yes, Jesse, I made up my mind. What you're asking sounds like a dirty job to me. Better find somebody else to do it for you. Oh, 
kind of a shame we're pulling out now, Hoppy, or just when they're getting ready to serve up chow. Uh, we'll eat out of our saddlebags. Uh, yeah, yeah. Say, what's the matter? You, you got something in your mind? No, oh, it's that kid. You know, his father did save my life. So what are we going to do? Uh, right now, I'm thinking... Jesse Mayo didn't invite me here as a guest, and I don't figure it'd be violating any hospitality rule if, if we... If we wish to help get that kid away. Huh? That's just what I've been thinking. Oh, now take it easy, Hoppy. We ain't got a chance of getting young Faber out of here. Not unless you want to swap lead with about 40 gunslingers. I'm not saying we should try to bulldog our way out. This is one of those times when you need a little finesse. Come on, let's head for that stockade where they got him tied up. <laughs> Give me a boost. You give me a boost. I'm the lightweight of this combination. <laughs> All right. Here you go. Come on. There. I'm up. Here. I'll give you a hand. All right. Here it, here it come. Ah. Now, let's drop down quietly. Right. Well, that wasn't so tough. Ah, the tough part might crop up any second. Look, young Faber's still here, still tied to the post. Uh, They must leave him out all night. Ah, The males have never been noted for sympathy and understanding. Come on. Ah, The kid seems to be asleep. You take his hands. I'll go to work on his feet. Mm, Tied with rawhide. Yeah, good thing I carry a boy knife. Uh, What is it? Take it easy. We're friends. Uh, Friends? Who are you? There's time for all that later. Right now, we want to get you away from here. You're going to have to carry me, then. I haven't got any more feeling in my feet than a fish. Uh, we'll carry you if we have to. Uh, there. Uh, get your feet. And there's his hands. Uh, ooh, but, catch him. I've got him. I'll be all right. Just move me around a little. Yeah. What's that? Probably Chuck Chasseur. He comes around every once in a while, and he's bad medicine. Can't even get to my gun. Not the way I'm holding this boy up. I've got a hand free. Well, this makes a very touching scene. Friend of yours, Faber? That's right, Chasseur. Friends of his. If you're smart, you'll leave us alone. Me and Mac ain't never smart. We enjoy buttoning on things like this. Take a look at that, Mac. Them lobos was trying to get that kid out of here. And one of them is Cassidy. Hop along, Cassidy. A guy with a reputation. And now he's all tight in knots trying to keep the kid on his feet. Let go of that kid, Cassidy. He'll drop if I let go of him. There's no feeling in his legs. Let him drop. You heard me, Cassidy. I said let him drop. Sorry, Chester. I wouldn't do that to anybody. Not even you. You know, Garth Mayo had an idea you might try something like this, Cassidy. And you know what he told me? Guy said, you catch that coyote trying to pull anything like that, you gun him down right where you find him. And I'm a man that takes pride in carrying out orders. Back off, Chester. Back off and let us alone. We're going out of here. <laughs> You're going out of here, all right. But you ain't going out on your feet. And we might as well settle that right now. Oh, my hand. My hand. Oh, now we're in for it. They'll be on us like wool. Now we're settled up and they're not. Let's get to those horses. But the kid here in that fence. There's another gate. We can blow the lock. Get going. I'll keep them back. As I walked out on the streets of Laredo, as I walked out in Laredo one day, I... Pardo, did you see your gal? No. No, I didn't see Joan, but I saw something else. The males just rode into town, which means they come after me. Sit down, Duke. Rest your feet. I'm not sitting down, Hoppy. I just stopped in to tell you I'm going to round up some of my friends. If Jesse Mayo wants a showdown, he's going to get it. I'm not running any longer. How many men are with Jesse, Duke? Twenty, maybe more. You round up that many friends on your side, and it'll be a lot more than a showdown. It'll be a war. I'm not running, Hoppy. Who's with Jesse? Garth Mayo, Chuck Chasseur, Rawhide Adams, and I thought I recognized Johnny Cleek, that gunslinger from Ponca City. Some rough boys there. It's no good, Hoppy. I'll never be able to marry Joan as long as her father feels the way he does. There's only one answer. 
I gotta have it out with him. Now, wait a minute. Wait for what? So one of the males can pick me off like a sitting duck? I'll see you both later. Hmm. Well, what are we gonna do about that kid? I've been thinking we might go and see Sanders McVeigh. A lawyer? Uh, what good's a lawyer when you're dealing with a male? McVeigh happens to be Jesse Mayo's own attorney. Handles all Jesse's affairs and has a lot of influence with him. McVeigh might be able to talk some sense into the men. Come on. All right. But suppose it don't do no good. Then I hope young Duke has more than just one or two friends. Because if he hasn't, we're going to be badly outnumbered. So you can see how it is, Mr. McVeigh. Well, I'll talk to Jesse. I don't know if it'll do any good, though. Jesse's pretty stubborn. But he sent word he was coming over to see me within the hour, so I'll talk to him. It might be a good idea if you kept him from encountering young Faber in the meantime. We'll take care of that. We'll go out and find Duke right now. Well, no sign of the kid, and we've been looking a couple of hours. Wonder if he left town. Oh, I don't think so. Not with Joan Mayo still here. If he did, I don't know. You hear that? Other side of town. Could have come from McVeigh's place. Maybe we better head over that way. Look, crowd in front of McVeigh's house. Uh, something's wrong, all right. There's Joan Mayo by the door. Looks like she's been crying. I've got to talk to her. Let me through, will you please? Joan, Joan Mayo. No, I didn't do that. Joan, it's it's Hopalong Cassidy. Remember me? Yes. Yes, I remember you. What is it, Joan? What's gone wrong here? Mr. Cassidy, my father, my father's just been shot. He's lying dead right in the backyard of this house. And Duke Faber, Duke Faber's the man who killed him. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy and our story, The Lawyer of Laredo. Her father murdered, apparently by the man she loves. This is the tragedy that confronts pretty Joan Mayo. And it's with reproach in her eyes that she faces Hopalong Cassidy, since Hoppy is Duke Faber's friend and has been helping him in his defiance of Joan's father. Duke Faber couldn't have killed your father, Joan. Duke isn't that kind of person. I never want to see him again, that's all. I never want to see him again. Joan, Joan, wait a minute. Let her alone, Cassidy. You've caused enough trouble already. How do you figure that, Garth? Well, if it wasn't for you helping Faber, he'd never have had the chance to burn Jesse down. Now, where's Faber now? Let's get him. I saw him run down the street right after the shooting. Where? Which way did you see him run? Down toward Miller's stable. Wait a minute, Garth. What do you expect to do with that rope? What do you think he's going to do with it? You use rope for hanging, don't you? This ain't going to be for no hanging. I'm going to find that killer and let Jesse's horse drag him around a little to make up for what he done to Jesse. I'd reconsider that idea if I were you, Garth. There's evidence your cousin Jesse was killed by Duke Faber. Duke can stand trial. But in the meantime, I wouldn't pull anything fancy. You think you can stop us? I can try. Yeah, well, I'm telling you something, Cassidy. You got 30 minutes to get out of town. If you're still around by then, you'll be staying permanent. Real permanent. Who is it? Bat Gilroy, town marshal. Come in. Hey, you've been looking for Duke Faber. That's right. We're friends of his. I'm Duke's friend, too. Known him for years, from his father before him. And just between the three of us, I know where he is. Yeah, hiding out? He feels he has to hide out, and so do I. That mail outfit has taken over the town. How about law and order? In Laredo, I'm the law and order. I've got one deputy sick and the other up north. So it's one man. One man against 15 or 20 gunfighters. Pretty big odds. Too big. So I thought I'd shorten them a little by deputizing you fellas. All right, if you feel you need us. Well, that's just the way I do feel. I know you by reputation, Cassidy, and right now I feel I need you badly. Is Duke Faber still in Laredo? Yes, I, I was afraid to try keeping him in jail, so... I let him hole up in the cellar of my house. I'd like to talk to him. Oh, come on. We'll go there right now. Who's there? It's me, kid. Take it easy. Oh, I... Oh, 
thought maybe it would... Hey, it's Hoppy. Ah, uh, you made yourself hard to find, Duke. Am I glad to see you fellas. Duke, tell me something, and give it to me straight. Did you put that bullet in Jesse Mayo? I don't think I did, Hoppy. You don't think you did? Well, you said to give it to you straight. Well, I did some drinking this afternoon. It was pretty hot, and I guess I passed out. Well, how about your pistol? I don't have it. Must have dropped it somewhere. Which makes it look bad, I know. Still doesn't prove you're guilty. Only a fair trial can do that, and I aim to see you get one. Hoppy. Yeah? How about Joan? Does she... She's pretty unhappy, Duke. Yeah. Yeah, I guess she must be. Marshal, how about Jesse Mayo's body? Do you have it under your jurisdiction? No, the Mayo outfit wouldn't turn it over. There ought to be an autopsy performed on that body. Yeah, you're right. What are we going to do? Walk in there and try taking it away from them? The way they seem to feel, that could lead to a lot more killing. Joan Mayo. She's the one we need to see. What good would that do? She seems to be the bitterest one of the whole bunch. I'll talk to her. Tonight. Oh, now, hold on, Hoppy. Remember what Goth Mayo told you about getting out of town in 30 minutes? Well, that was hours ago. What do you think he'll do if he catches you now? I've got to talk to Joan Mayo. Could mean the saving of Duke Favor's life. Hey, Joan! You sure that's her window? Who's down there? Joan! Joan! I've got to talk to you. Who is it? Hop along, Cassidy. I've got to talk to you about Duke Faber. All right, wait there. I'll be down. Well, looks as though Duke might get a little luck on his side. Looks like we have it on our side, too. If that had been Garth Mayer's room with us in the moonlight, why, uh, say, what do you say we get a little closer to this wall anyway? I don't think Garth will be around here anywhere. He's probably still at McVeigh's place. Uh, there ain't no place like Laredo. I've never been in this town yet when there wasn't trouble. Shh, here comes Joan. Mr. Cassidy. Thanks, Joan. Thanks for coming down. What is it about Duke? He stands to lose his life if you don't do something about it. Duke Faber killed my father. Did you see him do it? No, of course not. But I... Then how do you know he did it? Well, everybody says... Everybody says. Suppose Duke didn't do it, and he dies for it. Oh, Mr. Cassidy, if I could only know... You could do your best to find out. You can say you think a post-mortem should be performed on your father's body. The marshal has the legal right to order one, but your cousin Garth is defying him. And Garth has enough gunfighters behind him to make that stick. Post-mortem. I guess I could do that. You'll have to override Garth's orders. Garth? Well... Would you come with us to Sanders McVeigh's house now? All right. I'll come. All right, who is it? It's me, boss. Sure, sure. I got the town marshal with me. He wants to talk to you. What's the matter with you, Chesu? You know what I told you about? But Miss Joan is with him, Garth, and she says this is mighty important. And now the doctor and I'll join the party. Me too. Cassidy, what kind of trick is this, Gilroy? I came here to talk about law and order, Mayo, and I thought I might need a little help. Yeah, well, I don't figure you brought along quite enough help. Take a look around. I've already looked. I've already recognized Rawhide Adams, Chester Clark, and Tex Marvin. A tough bunch. Take a better look, Gilroy, in the corner. Tell them who you are, cowboy. I don't think you and the marshal ever met. I'm Clegg. Johnny Clegg. No. Clegg and I have never met. But I've heard of him. All right, Gilroy, what do you want? If it's Jesse's body, the answer is no. You're wrong, Garth. The answer is yes. I'm... Now, wait a second, Joan. You ain't gonna let him take your daddy out of this house. I feel I have to, Garth, to make sure that justice is done. After all, I believe I'm head of the Mayo family now. That's where you're wrong, young lady. McVeigh, where are you? Right here, Garth. Tell my little cousin here why her daddy come to see you this afternoon. Well, as your father's attorney, I drew up his will, Miss Mayo, several years ago. This afternoon, he came here to direct me to alter it. He wanted you disinherited. But before we could get around to that, he was shot. So the will still stands, and you'll inherit all the Mayo holdings. Now tell her how the will works, McVeigh. What Garth is getting at is the fact that you can't control anything until you're 30 years old. 
Until that time, control of the estate rests with the executor. So you see, Joan, you ain't really head of the family at all, which means I'm going to say what's to be done with your daddy's body, and I'm ashamed of you. Trying to help your own father's murderer. How do I know it was murder? My father's temper was horrible. He may have forced Duke Faber into a fight. I'm sorry, Miss Mayo. It was no fight. Your father was about to mount his horse in back of his house. He was standing with one foot in the stirrup when Duke Faber came around the fence and shot him without warning, before Jesse had a chance. All right, Gilroy, there it is. Now you're going to try taking Jesse's body out of here? And have you turned this room into a slaughterhouse? No, I'll wait. But I'll get it, Mayo. It's the law, and I'll get it somehow. You talk too much, Marshal. You talk too much for your own good. What do you think, Hoppy? Looks bad for the kid, don't it? But then, for all we know, Duke probably did do the killing. After all, he was drunk. He admits that himself. I know, but I still can't believe Duke Faber killed Jesse Mayo. And besides, a man is always entitled to a fair trial. Any man. If Garth Mayo has his way, Duke won't get a fair trial. The doctor just told me something I didn't know about, Cassidy. Seems he had a look at Jesse Mayo right after Jesse was shot. Doc happened to be passing by and somebody called him. Doc said the bullet entered Jesse's left side, but didn't come out. I don't know whether that means anything or not, but it... It means a lot. It means that the... Gilroy! Winder. That shot came from the winder. Quick, California, run for the doctor. The marshal's hurt badly. Well, uh, how is he? The doctor says he's going to live. Doc sure worked on him a long time. Saw him this morning. Gilroy's going to be sick for a long time. Several months, probably. Can't figure why he was shot. Because there was still the chance that he'd be able to claim Jesse Mayo's body. And somebody didn't want that to happen. I don't know, Harvey. This whole business looks pretty hopeless to me. We can't let it look hopeless, California. We're Gilroy's deputies. And right now, we're the only form of law and order that exists in Laredo. So we better start working at it. Getting ready to go somewhere, McVeigh? Cassidy, what are you doing around here this time of morning? I asked if you were going somewhere. Uh, To the Mayo Ranch. A lot of matters for me to take care of there. You're the executor of the Mayo Estate, aren't you, McVeigh? That's right. Jesse named me in the will. Yeah, that'll give you quite a lot of influence in the Southwest, won't it? Give you the chance to make a lot of money, too. Cattle deals on the side, land deals... Now, wait a minute. Just what are you getting at, Cassidy? Garth, come on out here. I'm getting at the fact that you stand to profit a great deal because Jesse Mayo died. What's going on out here? I'm saying that McVeigh killed Jesse Mayo and then talked you into keeping the marshal away from the body because there's a 38 bullet still in it. That's small caliber for around here, but it's about the size a man like McVeigh would use. Why, you're crazy, Cassidy. Why don't you want that bullet revealed, McVeigh? Because you own a 38 and everybody knows that Duke Faber always carries a 45? I'm arresting you, McVeigh, on suspicion of murder. And I'm claiming Jesse Mayo's body in the name of the law. Garth, are you going to let him get away with this? What would I get out of stopping him, McVeigh? I will run the holdings together. We'll have more power than any other two men in Texas. And we'll have it legally. Well, Garth, what's your play? I'm throwing in with McVeigh. Better think that over carefully, Garth. You'll be bucking something bigger than any of us. I don't figure it that way at all, Cassidy. I figure I'm just bucking you. Watch yourself. I'm throwing down on you right now. <laughs> He's down. You beat him to it, Hoppy. Uh, don't move, McVeigh, or you'll get it, too. No. No, I'll, I'll sign a confession, a full confession. Then we'll go right now and get it over with, so Joan May will know that Duke Faber didn't kill her father. Take care of Garth, California. Come on, McVeigh. Now, back to Hopalong Cassidy. Whoa there, horse. Take it easy, boy. All set, California? As soon as I get this cinch a little uh, <coughs> tighter. <laughs> there. That's better. 
Well, I'll take a last look around, and then it's goodbye, Laredo. Yeah, where Jesse Mayo found death, Duke Favor found his girl, and a man named McVeigh found you can't get away with murder. McVeigh wouldn't have found that out if you hadn't broken him down on it. Uh, how'd you figure it was McVeigh anyway? Because he lied. He lied when he said Duke Faber shot Jesse Mayo while Jesse was getting ready to mount his horse. How'd you know that? I knew it when I found out that Jesse took the bullet through his left side. But uh, how did you know? Well, you're ready to mount right now, aren't you? With one foot in the stirrup. Could a bullet hit you on the left side? Well, uh, not unless it came through the horse first. All right, there you are. There weren't any dead horses around McVeigh's place that I could see. Well, well, well I'll be doggone. <laughs> Mount up. <laughs> I'm up. Let's go. As I walked out on the streets of Laredo. <laughs> Feuds are pretty bitter things. But anyway, it's settled now, and it did give Hoppy the opportunity to repay a favor to an old friend. In their next thrilling adventure, Hoppy and California become involved in a murder and intrigue, and it's almost the finish of them before they discover the secret in the hill. Hopalong Cassidy, starring William Boyd, is transcribed and produced in the West by Walter White, Jr. Lawyer of Laredo was written by Buckley Angel, with original music under the personal direction of Albert Glasser. All stories are based upon the characters created by Clarence E. Mulford. This is a Commodore production. <laughs>